Praise God. It is so good to be here again tonight, worshiping with you all. Uh, I just want to let you know I have still been praying so much for our congregation, for our church, for our pastor, for our deacons, for our elders. I just I miss every one of you. And, and I just want to let you know that, that God has got this, as I've said before, and he is getting ready to open these doors back up. And, and great things is getting ready to happen. It's a new season, church. It's a new season. But as we come together, uh, God has laid on my heart uh, this message. It's, it's not going to be a real long message. God just laid on my heart to do a, a short message uh, tonight. Uh, we just, you know, this is a Wednesday night service, and I miss getting in a circle sometimes and holding hands and praying. But I, I miss uh, just being with you all, and I know y'all miss being here too. But we're going to come in these doors, and we're going to jump for joy. Hallelujah. That's the name of the title of my message uh, for tonight. It's jumping for joy. And we're going to do that. We're going to jump for joy. But before we begin, I always like to go to the Lord in prayer. So bow your heads with me wherever you're at, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for a new season. We thank you for a time <clears throat> that we're going to come and walk in these doors, and we're going to be jumping for joy for the excitement. But Lord, I just pray right now that, again, that you uh, hide me behind the cross and don't let nobody see me or hear me. Let them hear the Holy Spirit that's coming out of me, Lord, that's inside of me, speaking your word and teaching your word with all the wisdom and knowledge that you've got, Lord, through me. So God, just uh, help, help my voice and help me to, to bring the word like you want it brought, Lord. And I pray that every ear, every mind, every heart is open to receive your message tonight, Lord. And we just praise you and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And again, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm excited, church. I'm always excited to come and bring God's word. I know pastors the same way when he gets up here. It's a different time when you when you stand before God himself and bring the word that God wants you to bring. And it's not about you. It's not about pastor. It's all about Jesus, all about Amen. Holy Spirit, about God our Father, and we just praise Him and thank Him that we're able to do that. But anyway, I want to ask you another question like I did Sunday morning. <clears throat> what do you think about when you talk about jumping for joy? How many of you have, have been excited about something? Maybe, maybe it's just something, uh, your first child. You know, I remember my first child. I was so excited. I was just so happy. I was thanking God for my first child. But I thank God for all three of my kids. I thank God for my first grandkid, but I thank God for all 10 of my grandkids. I was jumping for joy and when, I, when all my grandkids, and you know, the hard part is when you really cannot hug your grandkid uh, or, or really be close to them again. It's hard and when we can't come to church and hug one another or even see one another, it's hard. But let me tell you, there's going to be a season, it's going to be a time that we're going to get back to that. It's going to be a little different, but we're going to be back to that time where we're hugging and we're, we're just excited and we're just praising God and we're jumping for joy. I mean, jumping for joy. So we're going to talk to you about a little story in, in the Word about Peter and John. You know, I, I love the story about, uh, we're going to be in the book of Acts, but I love Acts. I really do so much good in Acts. Uh, about the day of Pentecost. You know, when, when the day of Pentecost comes, the, the, the Holy Spirit, my Bible uh, tells, says it's the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit, came over that place, and my goodness what happened there. And listen, I'm going to tell you right now, Peter, when he walked the earth, when he got filled with the Holy Spirit, his shadow healed people. That the Bible says when he went through the shadow, but it didn't happen until the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, come upon him. Well, let me say this as we get ready to go into Scripture. You've got that same Holy Ghost, that Holy Spirit lives inside of you that lived in Peter. You've got that same Holy Spirit, and what are we doing with it? And we're going to look at a story, what Peter and John literally done with the Holy Spirit that God let them, let them have. We're going to start in Acts Chapter 3, we'll go 1 through 2 at, at first. It says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. The ninth hour. I want you to realize it was the ninth hour, and it was a special hour because that was a time of prayer. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms, from those who entered the temple. Now I want you to, to realize this story. 
You know, every time I told you before, every time I read God's Word, I get something new out of it. There's not a time in my life that I really study God's Word, not just read it, but study God's Word, that God don't show me something new, Pastor. And I, I just get so excited when He shows this to me because I think, why haven't I seen that before? It's right now. Amen. It's a new season. It's right now. The church, we need to see this, what's getting ready to happen in this church. And it's a new season. But anyway, I want you to look at this right here. It says that uh, the temple hour, prayer, the ninth hour, it was a certain hour, but a certain man, he was born lame. He didn't become lame by falling or getting hurt. <clears throat> from his mother's, from his birth of his mother, he was lame. He could not walk. So they, they carried him. They didn't say they carried him every once in a while. It said they carried him daily. And matter of fact, two guys, I picture it, two men pick him up, carry him, and lay him at the temple gate. Now, why the temple gate? <clears throat> well, I'm going to tell you. The temple gate is where everybody comes through. I mean, all the crowd, he's going to see everybody walks through that gate. And he's going to be sitting there, and you know what he says? He, he, he's asking for alms. Well, alms is, is asking for money or food. It's, it's, a, it's a definition that I need something. Give it to me. I want, I want, I want. So he laid there every day. You know, I'm sure there might have been a day or so that maybe he couldn't, but the Bible says he was there daily. They took him there daily. So 90% of the time, he was at that temple gate begging and asking for something. You know, I think about the people out here at the side you used to see. You don't see them as much now with all the coronavirus going on, but you used to see people hold the sign begging for something to eat. You know, as, as many times I have stopped myself, and I'm not bragging, but I have stopped and go buy them something. I have stopped and gave them money. <clears throat> and then I remember a, a, another pastor friend of mine told me once, he says, you know, we better be careful giving them money because they may go buy drugs or, or something to drink with them instead of buying something food. So, But this is what I've come to a conclusion, that whatever Holy Spirit tells you to do, Hallelujah. if he tells you to give somebody money, you give them money. If he tells you to give them food, you give them food. Oh, and and let, let God deal with them. You know, be obedient to what God wants you to do. If you need somebody, somebody needs something, help them if God tells you to do it. If God tells you, Holy Spirit says, no, you don't need to help that person, then you go around and don't help them. <clears throat> but we're going to show in this message tonight what Peter and John gave them. And I'm excited because, man, as I read this, I get so excited about what they gave them. So let's go to chapter Acts 3, 3 through 4. It says, Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. I love that. You know, here comes Peter and John. They probably, this beggar, this, this lame man, probably never seen them before. It was probably their very first time they ever seen him. You know, I, I really think about this, that this man was here every day daily, and all the people that came there daily knew him. Amen. They knew him. They knew his parents. They knew everything about They knew that he was lame from, from birth. They knew that he was going to be there most likely, and I feel like sometimes these people, as they walk through, they probably, I've helped him before. I'm going to go around this time. I'm not going to be bothered with him. You know, I, I don't know that, but I just feel that in my heart. Amen. That sometimes you just get to the point, you get tired of helping people. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. Sometimes we get to the point, we get tired of helping people. Because let me, let me tell you why we get tired of helping people. Because we give them the same thing. There's something that we're not giving them. We give them money. We give them food. We give them this. And we get to the point, we're tired of it. But if you give them something else... If you listen to me, if you give them something what they really need, and I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we're going to show you what Peter and John gave this lame man. And I'm excited about this. <clears throat> Acts 3, 5 through 6. It says, so he gave them his attention. Now, I want you to think there. I'm going to stop here just a minute. You know, he's been begging all the time, and all these people I really believe is going around him. So finally, he's got somebody's attention, Pastor. He's finally got there, you know, he's got somebody's tent. He's thinking, okay, now I'm going to get some gold. Now I'm going to get some silver. Now I'm going to get some food. Now I'm going to get some, because these guys don't know me. I've been laying here all my life lame, and now I'm going to get something from them. So they got, I've got their attention. So as we read on, then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, 
But what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Let me say this, church, that that does not get you excited, nothing will. See, listen to me. What we give people sometimes is, is food or, or money. How many of us truly ever stopped at a guy or a lady standing on the side of the road with a sign and walked up to him and says, listen to me, give me your attention just a minute. I know they're thinking you're going to stop and give them money. They Automatically, they're going to think that you're getting ready to feed them or give them some money. And you go up to them and say, listen to me, can I tell you about a man named Jesus? Can I share to you what he did on that cross? Can I tell you how much he loves you? Can I tell you that the only way that you're going to be able to survive or the only way for eternity where you're going to be is you need to know this man named Jesus? God's only begotten son. Have any of us ever took time in our life, instead of giving food or money, take time to go to that person and tell them about Jesus? My goodness, listen to me, church. Listen to me. This is what I love about Open Arms Church. I know I brag on our church. I'm going to brag on our church. Amen. As long as our church is doing it for Jesus, I'm always going to brag on our church. But listen, I know what our church does now. We've handed out money. We've handed out food. We have put... Uh, clothes on people. We have done this and we've done that. Only through Jesus have we done all this. I, I know you heard the word we, but through Jesus is the only one that's Amen. done this. But let me tell you what our church is doing now. Before we hand you anything, you come to church and hear about Jesus. Hallelujah. I love that, Pastor. Amen. Before we hand you clothes, before we hand you food, before we give you money, you come and join a church. Not to be a member. You come and join the church to hear about Jesus. Amen. And then we will feed you. Listen, once you get what you really need, that other stuff don't matter. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter. Listen, the food, the clothes, Jesus says, I will give you what you need. You get me first. And listen, when we get to the point like Peter and John as Christians, see, we look at Peter and John as the disciples that walk with Jesus, and we think, well, that's why. No, they've got the same Holy Spirit. I told you earlier, they've got the same Holy Spirit, and we got the same Holy Spirit as we both got. We've still all got Jesus. So it's no different back then than it is now. Sometimes we get wrapped up in this wicked world that we live in, we forget about who Jesus really is and what Jesus really does and what we're supposed to stand for and what we're supposed to be doing. We forget about that. Listen, give everybody you meet Jesus and the rest of the stuff God will provide. He will provide. Give them Jesus. That's all he's asking you to do. Give them Jesus. And watch what happens. Watch what happens. I want you to look at this. I do have... I do have, I give you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. This man has been lame for life. He was begging for food, for silver, for gold. And now he's getting something that's going to cause him to walk that he's never done before. Can you imagine? Look at Acts 3, 7 through 8. It says, and he took him by the right hand, this is Peter, and lifted him up. And immediately, whoo, listen to me. That, that right there just makes me have chill bumps. I want to I wanna jump for joy, Pastor. Immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength that they've never had before. Can you imagine how that felt to this lame man? All his life, he never felt his ankles. He never felt his feet. All of a sudden, he got something that he needed. He got the strength of Jesus. Only through Jesus can we receive that. Only through Jesus... Can we get that? So his ankle bones now receive strength. So he, leaping up, listen to me, my goodness, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, oh, I love this part, leaping and praising God. Well, I'm telling you, church, listen to me. We're, listen, when, listen, listen, I, I'm getting tore all the pieces right now. When we get so excited, when, when God does something, it's great. But listen, we need to start praising Jesus before it happens. Amen. Where is our faith? We're going to get into that a little bit too. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But where is our faith, church? Amen. Where is our faith? Now here's a man. Again, I want you to realize this. A man lame from birth, never walked, didn't even know how it felt to walk. And now he's jumping. And he's a running. And he's a jumping. And he's a praising God. He's not praising Peter. He's not praising John. He's praising God. And that's what Peter and John wants him to do. He didn't, they don't want nothing to do with it. They just want to say, 
I was obedient to do what Jesus told us to do. Are we doing it today? Are we truly doing it today? Are we lifting Jesus up to everybody that we come in contact with? Does people see that your walk, that they know that you've got Jesus? Or do they say, well, you know, he's got Jesus on Sunday. He's got Jesus on Wednesday night. He's got Jesus when the crowd's around. He's got Jesus when somebody, but you get him off to the side and see where Jesus is at. Listen to me. You live, you live for Jesus in the world where it's wicked or where it's good. It don't matter where it's at. You walk the walk that God's called you to walk and watch what God does. He will glorify his name through you. Praise God. His name through you. Let's go to scripture. Acts 3, 11. It says, now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John. Listen, held on to them. All the people ran. Listen to me. Together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's Greatly Amazed. Now, these people that ran was the ones I really believe that God showed me that dodged around him. They didn't want to have nothing to do with him. But now, but now, listen to me, church. But now they see something has happened. They see something that's happened. So they want to go find out what it is. They was going to, they, they know this man all their life. They know this man was lame from his mother's birth. They know his parents. They know that the two guys, I really believe, they carried him down there every day, daily. They knew them all. And now they see a man that's jumping and praising God. And they can't believe their eyes. They can't believe their eyes. But I love what Peter tells them. In Acts 3, 12, it says, So when Peter saw it, I love Peter's boldness, Pastor. We need to be more bold as Christians. Amen. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us? As though by our own power of godliness, we have made this man walk. I love that part because he's telling them right now, I have nothing to do with it. I have nothing to do with me up here preaching right now, Pastor. Pastor, when you preach Sunday, you will have nothing to do with it. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about the deacons. It's not about the elders. It's not about anybody in this whole church building. When we get back in here, it's all about what Jesus did. It's all about Jesus opening them doors again, letting us walk in here. It's all about Jesus letting us hug again. It's all about Jesus doing anything that we do. It's all about Jesus. When pastor and myself baptizing somebody, it's not us. It's all about Jesus. We're just being obedient to baptize people. Listen. It's all about Jesus. And how much excited can we get to just thank God and get excited for Jesus? Listen, I'm jumping for joy all the time. This is just a story that God has touched my heart with. And I tell you what, I hope and pray he's doing the same for you all today. Acts 3, 13 through 14. <clears throat> I love uh, Peter's, again, he says, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you, listen to me, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you, oh, I, guess, I guarantee you these people wanted to run away now. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, witnesses. You want to know who healed this man? It's the one that you put on the cross. It's the one that you denied. It's the one that you cursed. It's the one that you spit upon. It's the one that you said, I don't want to have a part with him. When all he did was walk this earth, healing people, doing good, helping people, and he's still doing it today. And people today are still denying him, saying he's not real. Listen, he is as real today as he was as he walked this earth. He is beside the Father up in heaven, and he is waiting for us be raptured out of this place Lord. and I feel sorry for the ones that deny him right now. I feel Hallelujah. sorry for him. I do. I feel sorry for you that Jesus. denies Jesus right now. Jesus. As we finish up, I told you it's going to be short. Acts 3.16. It might be short, but it's powerful. Not by me, Amen. by Jesus Christ. Acts 3.16 it says, and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know, yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. 
Whoa, praise God, listen to me. It takes our faith, church. It takes our faith to know that Jesus Christ has done everything. He says, greater are you that has it walked with me than you that believe me without seeing me. He's talking to this generation. He's talking to us right now. He's talking to you right now that's listening. Every one of us has to have that faith knowing that Jesus Christ is still the same today as he was 2,000 years ago. He's still the same right now as he was back then. He hasn't changed a bit. The only thing's changed is us. Listen, this new season when Pastor preached that first Sunday that everybody comes back in here, this new season is going to be a different season. You're going to see two different pastors because... We already believe in worship, and that's all we care about is the worship in Jesus. Amen. But let me, we're going to teach you all, not that we know how, but through Jesus Christ, all the way we're teaching you all how to truly worship Jesus when this new season starts here in church. Lord. It's going to be praising God, and that's all that matters. You know, I miss our music. I can't wait to hear the praise team again. I, I, miss, I miss things that's happening. I miss our little... Or a little a shop in the kitchen for a coffee and, and donuts. I miss the time we gather together in fellowship for Christmas or for a special occasion that we set together. I miss all that. But let me tell you, that all is good, but what's more important than all that is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The one that died for us, the one it's all about. He's the only one that's going to heal this coronavirus. He's the only one. I pray in my heart right now that each and every one of us at 8 o'clock is still yes. crying out to God. I know men pastor are, Amen. but I'm praying everybody is still praying for that healing of this land. Listen, this land we think is getting healed. If you get on the news, it's not yet. It, he's expecting us Christians to keep crying out and keep begging for that healing and keep doing our part as the scripture says cry out to him and ask God to examine your mind and your heart and, and whatever's going on in your life and if we need to make a change let's change and then, then he says I will come then and heal this land it's getting ready to happen it's Amen. getting this as well as that trump is getting ready to sound Amen. it's getting ready to happen and I pray and my prayer for you all this Wednesday night is every one of us get that excitement they're jumping for joy because of Jesus and only through Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I'm so excited. I thank you. I just can't get enough of you, Jesus. I can't. Lord, I just can't get enough of you. Holy Spirit is just absolutely tingling me from my toes to my head right now because I feel your presence so strong right here. Lord, I know when you said two or more is gathered in my name, I'm there. Me and pastors here together. And God, you're in the middle and you're leading and directing both of us, Lord. And I thank you for that. Now, God, just touch people's heart right now. Put your loving arms around them and let them know all they've got to do is just cry out to you and trust you and have the faith that things is going to be better and going to get better and it's coming soon. I promise you, God's done show me it's coming soon. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.